Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Blockchain Central. In today's episode, we'll look into stablecoins. We'll explain how they work, what types of collateral they use, but also look at their upsides and downsides. Later in the video, we'll also give a few examples of interesting stablecoin projects and talk about potential future developments. Before we start, please be sure to subscribe to our channel, if you haven't already, and check out our Medium blog at medium.com backslash at block essence. See the link in the description box for details. Some people refer to stablecoins as the holy grail of crypto, while others call it the biggest threat to the decentralized economy. It is clear that the concept is highly polarizing and sparks intense emotions within the community. The primary goal of a stablecoin is to eliminate the inherent price volatility of cryptocurrencies. According to some, those fluctuations in value are one of the biggest obstacles to widespread crypto adoption. In order to serve as a proper currency, an asset must be able to perform the following three functions. It needs to serve as a medium of exchange, a store of value, and a unit of account. Price volatility influences all three of those aspects and pushes crypto into the realm of speculative assets rather than the real life currency. There are several reasons why cryptocurrencies are so volatile. These include market maturity, lack of regulation, and relatively low liquidity. Speculation also plays a big part, which leads to a vicious cycle. Volatility encourages speculation, which in turn contributes to price fluctuations. Stable coins are here to mitigate that, at least theoretically. The concept behind a stable coin is to have its value fixed to a different, more stable asset. This idea is called pegging. The origins of pegging can be traced back to the gold standard, a system where a currency's value was linked directly to gold. The gold standard, even though not used by any government at the moment, had many benefits, especially in the post-war era of economic growth. It stabilized economies and curbed inflation. Stable coins such as Tether, True USD, or USD coin are pegged to the US dollar, which means that their unit value always directly corresponds to the price of the USD. But of course, there are other types that do not rely on fiat currencies. Let's break them down. First of all, a short disclaimer. We're aware that the terms collateralization and backing have slightly different meanings, but to maintain the flow of this video, we'll mostly use them as synonyms. The first type of stable coin is of course the fiat collateralized type. To achieve pegging, a specific amount of fiat currency has to be deposited within a centralized party. This amount then represents the number of crypto assets issued. So if you want a million tokens pegged to the US dollar, you'll need a million dollars in the bank. The deposit guarantees redeemability of the coin and ensures its liquidity. As simple and straightforward as this model sounds, there are certain challenges that it presents. Scalability can be an issue, as each coin needs a backing in the form of real funds. Also, many people criticize the necessity for a centralized deposit and the need for regular audits to ensure the backing capital is present. Of course, currency backing is not the only option here. Other assets or commodities could be used as collateral. A good example is the now infamous Petro, a Venezuelan stablecoin that was supposed to be pegged to a barrel of oil and collateralized against the country's oil reserves. Something clearly didn't work out, as Petro appears to be all but dead as of Q2 2019. The second type of collateralization is based on a cryptocurrency. Even though it might seem counterintuitive to peg a stablecoin to a crypto, these tokens are really a thing. In order to compensate for the volatility, these stablecoins are over collateralized. This means that the deposit can be twice as high as the supply of coins. Even if the underlying asset depreciates by 20%, the stablecoin can still keep a stable price as there is still enough collateral in the deposit to cover the fluctuation. In a scenario where the deposited asset becomes completely worthless, the stablecoin also collapses. The third and probably the most interesting type are non-collateralized stablecoins. These coins are not backed by anything and rely entirely on their inherent or perceived value. The price is kept stable by a smart contract algorithm that automatically regulates the supply and balances the price. It is not too different from what central banks do for fiat currencies, with the main difference being decentralization and automation. Now that we know all three types, let's look into the advantages and disadvantages of the technology. The primary advantage is that having a stable exchange rate can facilitate the use of cryptos as mainstream, everyday currency. This means that the total addressable market for stable coins is actually the global currency market, estimated at 90 trillion USD. Widespread retail adoption could herald the beginning of a global, decentralized economy. In addition, stable coins can serve as a bridge between the traditional financial world and the digital world, facilitating easy, lossless exchanges. The market of retail finance also opens up to crypto. Consumer loans, insurance, and other financial tools can now be accessible through decentralized technologies. This allows us to remove intermediaries and ensure security and transparency. 
When it comes to wider financial markets, stable coins can be used to protect against market corrections and consolidate positions without the necessity of going back to fiat. The investor can remain in the crypto realm, but still be safe against any drastic market drops. It's not all perfect, of course. Stable coins, especially fiat collateralized ones, receive heavy criticism for being centralized. After all, maintaining a safe deposit that serves as a collateral makes more sense when done through a single centralized institution. We also have to keep in mind that fiat currencies are also fluctuating in value, which reflects on the performance of fiat-backed cryptos. Crypto collateralized currencies, on the other hand, are at risk of potential black swan events. These are unpredictable market crashes that can drive the value of the backing asset to zero. We also mentioned scaling as a fundamental issue, considering that the reserved backed stablecoin requires significant and ongoing investment to keep growing. Now that we're aware of the risk and the opportunities, let's analyze a few stablecoins available today. The most well-known stablecoin is probably Tether. Although, due to a number of controversies surrounding the coin, we could say that it's more notoriety than fame. We have an entire episode on Tether, you can check it out here, but in the summary, it's a US peg stablecoin operated by Tether Limited. One of the first controversies was the allegation that Tether is owned and operated by the management of crypto exchange, Bitfinex. Even though the companies denied that at first, it was later confirmed to be true. Later, there were allegations that the coin is undercapitalized, with Tether refusing to disclose their banking relationship. When the bank managing Tether's account was finally revealed, the company still refused to subject itself to a formal audit from a reputable firm. In our April recap episode, we also mentioned the most recent controversies surrounding Tether and Bitfinex. You can check it out here. Interestingly enough, despite all those red flags, Tether remains the dominant stablecoin with a market cap of 2.8 billion. The main competitors of Tether are TrueUSD, Gemini, Paxos, and USD Coin. TrueUSD is notable for being much more transparent and open to auditing than Tether. USD Coin is particularly interesting as it is backed by none other than Coinbase itself. We made a full video about the customer facing exchange. Click right here to watch it. Paxos, another fiat collateralized stablecoin, has also raised a few red flags in September 2018 for allegedly allowing the authorities a backdoor into their customers' accounts. While Paxos has always been advertised as compliance first, some analysts claim that it poses a serious vulnerability for the users. Paxos saw a significant hike in demand in April 2019, following Tether and Bitfinex issues with liquidity. As an example of a non-collateralized coin, we can mention the now defunct basis coin that was algorithmically adjusting its supply to remain precisely pegged to the USD. Unfortunately, the project was closed in December of 2018, quoting regulatory constraints as the main reason. A middle ground between fiat pegged and non-collateralized currencies is DAI, a stablecoin issued by MakerDAO and collateralized by Ethereum reserves. It also aims to maintain a one-to-one -one relationship with the USD. It uses an algorithmic stability fee that regulates supply. In reality, DAI has struggled to maintain its one-to-one -one peg, mostly remaining below the target of one US dollar. Due to its design, the value of DAI can't go up too much, even though the value of its collateral, Ethereum, has been going up in the recent months. A potential major game changer for the industry could be Facebook if it launched its long-predicted fiat-backed stablecoin. The tech giant not only has the capital to fully collateralize its stablecoin, but also the leverage to push its widespread adoption. One of the possible use cases is paying content creators for ads with the new token, or even reimbursing the users for watching ads. According to Barclays analyst Ross Sandler, the stablecoin could yield anywhere from $3 billion to $19 billion in additional revenue by 2021. We'll of course monitor the events and keep you posted. What's your take on stablecoins? Are you in the Holy Grail camp or on the opposite side of the spectrum? Let us know in the comments. If you want to do more research on this subject, we've linked all of our sources in the description below. Before you go, please note that this content does neither represent financial, legal, or tax advice, nor is it supposed to be understood or interpreted as solicitation to buy or sell any securities, coins, or tokens. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to Blockchain Central to never miss a beat. Don't forget to check out our blog. The link is in the description below. See you in the next one.